On the 18th of April 2020, I reached 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Woohoo! Time for a little dance. So I want to thank you personally for helping me do that by watching my videos, by supporting my channel, by leaving comments, liking my videos, perhaps by sharing them with other people. And also those of you who have supported me in other ways, maybe by listening to podcast episodes or being on my email list or just checking out my website and social media channels as well. So I just want to say really from the bottom of my heart that I really appreciate you watching my videos and supporting this channel. And I can't wait to help support you in more ways with more great content over the next few weeks, months and years. So as a treat and a way of saying thank you, I have some free gifts for you. These include my 10 Strategies for Your Success ebook, a number of self-hypnosis recordings on confidence, creative visualization, and my rapid relaxation exercise, and also the coronavirus checklist. To get any or all of those, go to selfhelpforlife.com forward slash free. So that's selfhelpforlife.com forward slash free, or you can click the first link in the description below, or it will also be the first link in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast version. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul Thomas. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and the founder of selfhelpforlife.com. And on this YouTube channel, we cover personal development, psychology, mental health, and lots of other ways to help you have a better life by helping yourself. Now, occasionally I cover videos that go inside my business, and this is going to be one of these videos where I'm going to show you very specifically how I got up to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. This is not going to be a very generic how to get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube videos. I've seen quite a few of those over the last couple of years. This is going to be very specific about exactly what I did to get 1,000 YouTube subscribers. So let's kick off with some basic stats. So I have recorded 82 videos so far. So it's taken 82 videos to get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And those videos have been recorded over a period of about two and a half years, which is quite slow compared to many other YouTubers out there. Now, each video has been anything from eight minutes long to 28 minutes long. So quite a lot of my videos are longer. And although I can't really prove that by looking at the stats, I do feel that longer videos have helped my channel growth. And if you wanted to grow your channel much more quickly than me, say you want to get a thousand YouTube subscribers in a year, then I reckon you would need to do more videos, probably maybe 120 to 150 videos, because time is actually a benefit in a way. The longer your channel runs, the more people have a chance to find your videos for the first time. So if you're happy to be patient, you can do less videos and get that growth. So it really depends on how fast or slowly you want to grow your YouTube channel. So I'm now going to share with you how my channel grew. So sometime in 2018, I hit 100 subscribers. I can't remember when it was now because I wasn't really tracking those stats at that time. And then on the 2nd of May 2019, I hit 200 subscribers. Things started to grow a bit more quickly then. So about three and a half months later, on the 23rd of August, I hit 300 subscribers. And then it took a couple more months to get to 400 subscribers. That was the 25th of October. And then 500 subscribers about six weeks later in early December. And then it was getting to about 100 subscribers a month. So early January, 600 subscribers. First of February, 700 subscribers. And February was a good month because I increased 100 subscribers within a month. So 800 subscribers on the 27th of February. Things slowed down a little bit in March. I would put that down to the coronavirus. So it took a little bit more than a month to get to 900 subscribers. But then in April, things really picked up again. And as I mentioned earlier, on the 18th of April, I hit 1000 YouTube subscribers. So my key message here is that it is not a race. And my progress is quite slow compared to other YouTubers. And that's fine and I'm totally fine with that. It really all comes down to how much time you have, how committed you are, and how much you want your channel to grow quickly. And one thing you also notice is that each 100 subscribers gets easier and quicker because of the compounding effect. So all my older videos, some that are over two years old now, people are still finding those videos and people are still watching those videos and people are still subscribing to my channel as a result of those videos. So each 100 subscribers gets easier and easier, as you can see from here. And you have to think of it as a bit like planting a seed. Each video is like a seed and it's, it's gonna take a while for that seed to start to turn into a, a nice little plant and grow. So if you think of it like that, that can really help you. 
I'll now share with you a watch time chart from YouTube Analytics. For this one, I've set the date to December 2018 up until now, because that was when I started being consistent with publishing YouTube videos. So you can see that progress in 2018 was pretty slow, but it started to pick up in 2019. And you can see that the first part of 2020 is really ramped up. So again, you can see how being consistent and just allowing that compounding effect to take place is really important. Now let's talk a bit about consistency. You've probably heard this already, but to be successful on YouTube, you need to publish videos consistently. And I wasn't very consistent in the first few months. As you can see from this uh, slide here, from when I started the channel in September 2017 until November 2018, I was very inconsistent. During that time, I did 20 videos over 14 months. And interestingly, and maybe not surprisingly, the channel didn't really grow during that time. But then I set a goal and intention to do weekly videos starting in December 2018. So it was a bit like a sort of New Year's resolution starting a little bit early there. And I continued that to October 2019. So that was a video per week and the growth really started to happen then. I then slowed things down a little bit uh, from November 2019 to March 2020. And what I did then was I did three videos a month. But it's interesting, the growth still happened even with that slightly lower publishing schedule. And then from April, so from this month onwards, I've gone back to one video per week because I'm at home a lot more at the moment, so I've got plenty of time to do that. Another thing that I think has really helped me gain over 1,000 YouTube subscribers is providing unusual content. Now, the self-help, personal development, psychology, mental health niche is a massive niche and it's very, very competitive. So, I mean, a good thing about that is that you also have an infinite number of topics to talk about, which is one of the things I really love about this niche. But what is a really good idea in the early stages is to pick less popular topics. So to talk about things that other YouTubers are not talking about so much. So some examples of some videos that I've done that are less popular and have done really well in Google include the reticular activating system. So this is a part of the brain that tends to notice opportunities when you think about certain goals and things like that. Uh, I did a video on the four personality types, so type A, B, C, and D. This has been a popular YouTube video, but it's also been a staggeringly popular blog post. That one blog post that goes with that video, I think gets 20% of all my uh, website visits at the moment. So that's done really, really well. Also the Sedona method. So this is quite a specific process for releasing emotions. That one's done really well. And also one post that I did on how to have a burning desire. This was one I did because I was actually quite frustrated at finding out how to have a burning desire. Everybody says you need it, but nobody actually tells you how to have it. So that was one video that has done really well and I'm very proud of that video. So the strategy here is to find topics that people are searching for. You do want to create videos on things that people are searching for, but you want to find less popular topics. And a great tool that I use to do that is called Longtail Pro. So it's actually more designed for Google SEO, but it really helps you find the kind of topics and keywords that are less competitive, less popular, but still have a reasonable search volume. And if you want to check out Longtail Pro, I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. So the next thing that really helped me was using my intuition. So I think it was a year, 18 months ago now, I was in the shower one morning and I came up with this title for a video called How to Hypnotize Yourself. And I just thought, this is a brilliant title. And I just had some kind of inner knowing that this would be a popular video. And it was also quite an easy video for me to do as a clinical hypnotherapist. I know a lot about self-hypnosis. So I did a bit of research and came up with a nice structure for the video. And that video is now by far the most popular video on YouTube. That video has had 12,000 views now, a lot more than any other of my videos. And that video alone has been instrumental in my channel growth. So if you have some kind of intuitive hunch that a video might be a good idea, trust it and do that video and notice what happens. So this next strategy, which I feel was really a game changer for me, was taking the audio of the YouTube videos and turning them into podcast episodes. Because most of my content is self-help, personal development, psychology related, it's generally me talking into the camera. I have occasional visual aids, but most of my videos, it's just me talking into the camera. Now this video has more visual aids than most. So generally, most people can get the benefit of my content by listening as opposed to watching. Of course, it's nice to see what I look like, but for most of the time, listening is sufficient. 
So that's why I turn my videos into podcast episodes. And at the moment, I get about 350 people per day listening to my podcast episodes, as opposed to about 150 people per day watching my videos. So twice the number of people actually listen to me rather than watch me. And of course, people from my podcast come over to see what I look like on YouTube and then maybe start following me on YouTube as well. So how do you do this then? Well, many of the video editing softwares out there allow you to create an audio version of your video. And if yours doesn't, there are free and inexpensive options out there that can convert videos into audio files. Once you've done that, you need somewhere to host your podcast. I use Buzzsprout. So what that does is you upload your episode to Buzzsprout and then that automatically distributes it to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts and the other various podcast players out there. What you might also want is it to have is an intro and an outro. That's what I have on mine. So you can record those using any kind of inexpensive software. Um, Audacity is a popular one or GarageBand if you're using a Mac. And then you can use the software called Orphonic. This is web-based. And what you can do is you can add your intro and your outro to Orphonic. And then every time you upload a new audio from your video, it automatically puts the intro and the outro on it for you. So it's really, really quick and easy to do. Another great thing about Orphonic is it levels the sound volume of your podcast so that it's all consistent all the way through. But even better, it levels your sound compared to other podcasts that people are listening to as well. So it kind of has like an a industry standard for what the volume level of a podcast should be. So it means that if, if uh, you're listening to Brenda Bouchard's podcast and then you get my podcast and then you get maybe Marie Forleo's podcast after that, the sound volume should be the same on all three of the podcasts. So you're not having to keep changing your volume control. So Orphonic is great. Also, it's free unless you're doing a lot of podcast episodes. And I'll put a link to Orphonic and also Buzzsprout in the description below this video. The next thing that I felt really helped me was being myself and being me. You know, I'm not like Tony Robbins. I'm not like Brendan Burchard. I'm not one of those super pumped, highly inspirational, highly motivational speakers and leaders. And I don't really relate to those kind of people either. I think my strength is, is really providing practical, down-to-earth content that's easy to apply. And when you're creating content on YouTube, you really want it to be one or more of these three things. You want it to be informative in some way, so educational or informative. You want it to be inspirational. And if you can, you also want it to be entertaining. Now, for me, I struggle with entertaining content, so I don't really try and do that. So I focus on making my content educational or informative. And if I can, make it inspiring as well. For you, it might be different. Maybe you're great at creating entertaining content. So if you can do, that's great. But if you can make your content one of those three things, and if you can do more, if you can do all three, that's fantastic. That will really help you. So for me, I like my content to be practical, down to earth, easy to understand, so that you know exactly what to do and the benefits of doing that. And I see myself really as just a normal guy, someone that wants to get more out of life, and someone that's learned a few skills along the way that I can help and share with you. So many YouTubers have this super excitable presence on YouTube, and it's easy to feel that you need to be that way too. But the reality is you don't. I know someone who's quite dull and boring on YouTube, but his content is really, really good, and he has over 200,000 subscribers. So he's just being himself and providing great content. So as long as you have an interest in the subject and a passion for it, and you've got some balls, you can be successful on YouTube. So my next idea or tip may or may not have helped my channel grow, but I feel it was important anyway. And that is the idea that the best way to learn something is to teach it. So when I've had a topic that I wanted to learn more about, I've created a YouTube video on it to help me learn. So it's been purely selfish, but some of those videos have done really well. So just to give you some examples, the video I did on epigenetics, that was really for me to understand exactly what epigenetics was. I also did a really in-depth video on the idea that you get what you focus on and got really into neuroplasticity on that one as well. That really helped cement those ideas in my brain. 
And also I did a video on how to improve your brain power and reduce stress and anxiety. That was from a seminar, a hypnotherapy seminar that I went to in Sydney. And I just wanted to really just um, get all that information in at a deeper level. So I did that video as well. So the next thing I did was record occasional videos about me. Now it's difficult to know if this helped my channel grow or not, but it's interesting how traditional marketing advice says that people are only interested in what is in it for them. Okay, so they're not really interested about you. They're just interested in what's in it for them. Now, if that was really true, why is reality TV so popular? It's popular because people like to get a bit of an idea of the lives of other people. And on the case of YouTube, when you reveal a bit about yourself and talk a bit about yourself, and I don't do this very much, but when you do it just occasionally, it helps people really get to like, know and trust you. And that's really important for having long term followers. So some of the videos I've done include this one, of course, explaining how I got to 1000 subscribers. Also, I did a review of 2019. So all the things I did in 2019 that was included business, but also personal things, holidays, things like that. I also did another video when I'd recorded 50 YouTube videos and went into some of the mental, emotional and strategies around that. And also I did a video last year on the barefoot investor. So how I was saving 60% of my income. So these were all personal experiences of things I've been doing, which I thought would be useful to share with other people like you. And my last tip is to put a bit of focus and attention and work into your thumbnails. Now, I'm not really an arty person, so my thumbnails were not very good in the early days. They were typically a picture of me with some kind of heading over the top. And what I then did was I got a bit of help with creating thumbnails and uh, my thumbnails are now a lot better. And that's one thing that I do think has helped my channel grow. So the way I think about thumbnails now is that the most important thing that I want the viewer to see is the heading. So I put a lot of effort into the heading, what the heading is going to be. Then the second thing I want people to see is me. So I'm normally on one side of the thumbnail. And then the third bit, the least important is the background. So quite often my backgrounds are often quite boring. They're just sort of different colors. Sometimes there's a little image in there because the most important thing I want people to see is the headline. So really focus on that. Make your headline stand out, then the picture of you, and then whatever background you have in that order. Now here is a bonus tip. This one is more advanced and that is to turn your YouTube videos into blog posts. So what you do is you create a blog post and you have your YouTube video embedded in the blog post. So why is this a good idea? Well, firstly, some people prefer to read rather than watch or listen. And it's easier to skim through a blog post than a 10, 15 or 20 minute video. Also, blog posts will rank in Google. Um, so that will be another way that people will find you. And I know that quite a few people have found my videos via my blog posts. So that's beneficial as well. Also on a blog post, it's much easier for people to find out more about your products, services, coaching, or opt into your email list. You can have banners on your website on the right hand side or within your content to allow people to do that. On YouTube, that's harder because you can have, you can mention these in your videos and you can have links in the description below, but it's not as easy as when you're on a blog post. Now the downside of this is that it is a lot of extra work. Now you can download a transcript of your video from YouTube and then you can use that to turn it into a blog post, but it does require a lot of editing. It's something you could get someone else to do for you if you have the funds to do that, but it can take a lot of time. So that's why this is really more of an advanced strategy. But if you have the time to do it and you can do it, then it's really, really beneficial. So these are the main things that I did that I feel helped me get over 1000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you're watching this and you have your own YouTube channel, this will give you an idea of what it takes. Remember, it's not a race. Go at your own speed and just ensure that you're creating great content on a consistent basis and that will do a lot of the work for you. Now, if you do have any comments or questions, please leave a comment below and I promise to answer that. And I wish you every success with your YouTube channel. Now, as a reminder and my way of saying thank you for watching my videos and supporting my channel, I'd like to give you the opportunity to download some free gifts. So to do that, go to selfhelpforlife.com forward slash free. And on that page, you can download my 10 strategies for your success ebook. 
a number of self-hypnosis recordings, including confidence, creative visualization, and my rapid relaxation exercise. And I'll be adding other resources to that page over time, so do go and check it out often. So thank you again for supporting this channel. Thank you for your comments, your positive feedback, and your words of encouragement. I really couldn't have done this without you, and I can't wait to share more great content with you over the coming weeks, months, and years. So I look forward to talking with you again in the next video. Bye for now.